Okay guys, this is the last video in the Photoshop video timeline series. So let's take a look at how to export your video from Photoshop. One of the things before we get into that actual dialog box that I want to point out to you is this slider here. This is the workspace slider. Okay, so where this is going to come in handy is when we get to that dialog box. For example, if your boss says, hey, can you export a video from this frame to this frame? Or, you know, from this section to this section. This is how you would define that section, okay? So this is just something I'm just hypothetically, hypothetically dragging around. Keep that in the back of your mind and I'll show you how it applies in the dialog box. Now, let's go into the render video dialog box. To access that, you're going to need to click on the hamburger menu icon in the upper right hand corner of your timeline panel. Go ahead and click on that. Mine's a little bit off screen, so I'm going to come down to click, uh, come down and click on render video. The dialog box will pop, pop up, and from here you can give this video a new name. It will tell you what your your settings are currently set at, and the file type that I'm going to export is an MP4, and that is a pretty standard thing for web videos. So we are going to leave that set alone. But I am going to show you, excuse me, we're going we're gonna to leave that setting alone, but I am going to show you the different options you could use should you need them. You can select a different folder, like I'm going to put this on my desktop, and click choose. I can tell it to use a specific, um, I can use an either media encoder or I can send it out as a pho Photoshop image sequence. This is very rarely used. A, a photo, Photoshop image sequence is literally extracting every single frame from the video as a PNG file. Okay, do you see why that's not used very often? So stick with the uh, Adobe Media Encoder. The format. This is where you change things up. You can have a QuickTime movie. I'm on a Mac, so it supports QuickTime. If you're on a Windows machine, you may not get this option. And you'll see that the file extension file extension has changed, right? So let's see what happens when we say DPX. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Okay, let's go ahead and leave that set as H.264 because that is really a very common thing these days. Yeah, just leave it set there. Let's look at preset. Mine is currently set to high quality because I'm going to save the very best file that I can possibly save on my own computer. Uh, for me, I upload all of my videos to YouTube. So <laughs> YouTube takes care of the compression that it's needed that is needed for web productions. But someday down the road, if I need to go back, I want the best quality videos because I know that they are going to compress them anyway. Now, if you have to upload it to your web server, you may need to have a different quality of file. For example, you, you can't stream the highest quality videos today quickly. So you need something that may be a smaller file size. So you may want something that's a medium quality or a lower quality that streams super fast. And this is where you can do that. You can say, hey, use a medium quality or hey, use a lower quality. So that will help you with um, preparing this particular file for the web. You can choose different file sizes here, but uh, it's really better if you, um, if you set the document from the very beginning where we chose the kind of document after we chose a new document from, you know, whenever we opened up Photoshop. It's better to do it there than it is to do it here. All right. The rest of these we're going to leave alone. I would really suggest not playing with the frames per second. Leave it set at 29.97. Now this one is interesting. Range. I can tell it to export all the frames. I can tell it to start at one particular frame and then end at a particular frame. And I, I can also tell it to just do the work area. Remember when I changed these sliders to say, hey, I only want to export this particular part of my movie. So that's what I did here. That's 
it works like a selection or marching ants, it, you know, that we uh, that we see in Photoshop all the time. Now, I'm going to go ahead and choose all frames because that's what I want for this particular project. Rendering options, this is more about 3D, so leave those alone. Then when you're done, go ahead and click on Render. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm recording a video, okay? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing how to render video out of Photoshop. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video series.